So hello everyone and welcome to my talk about the uh, QEMO emulated uh, NVMe device. Uh, my name is Klaus and I'm a software engineer with uh, Samsung Electronics. And this is my first time speaking at the KVM forum and I am very excited to, uh, to be here. So this is gonna be in context of NVMe. Uh, so NVMe is the non-volatile memory express. It's a storage interface that's designed to exploit the low latency and inherent parallelism of NAND flash memory. And to understand some of the things we'll talk about in this uh, talk, you, there are some core terminology uh, that we should go through. Uh, basically in NVMe, you have the concept of a controller, which is a PCI express function that acts as the interface between uh, the host, which is the, the device is connected to, and an NVM subsystem. The namespaces are quantities of non-volatile memory that are accessed independently from other namespaces and typically by a logical block address. Uh, NVM subsystem combines these things uh, into a, a set of one or more controllers, zero or more namespaces, and one or more ports, uh, a port here being, a, let's say, a PCI slot. So a little bit of history on the uh, NVMe uh, device. It was first contributed by Keith Bush at that time working for Intel in 2013. And the implementation that he did held up for uh, several years. Uh, it did the job and people could uh, develop drivers, test out their drivers uh, in an emulated setting before uh, or when hardware was, was, limit, uh, was of limited availability. Um, in 2018 and 19, I became involved in the open source, uh, open channel SSD ecosystem. And I was using QEMO on a day-to-day -day basis um, extensively. So I started to add a bunch of missing mandatory features to the device. And one of the things I started working on uh, a lot was adding support for multiple namespaces uh, to support um, the open channel SSD on emulated open channel SSD. Um, so because I, I started to contribute a lot uh, from 2019 and, and up through uh, the next couple of years, I became a co-maintainer in mid-2020. Uh, so one of the things I added was that I bumped the device version to, uh, to uh, implement NVMe v1.4. I added the multiple namespace supports. In 2020 also, we got the support for uh, zoned namespaces in the NVMe device. We added, uh, Minwoo added the uh, subsystem and namespace sharing support, and we added metadata and end-to-end -end data protection, uh, to, just to mention a few major features that, that we've uh, gotten recently. So as you can see, things actually moved pretty fast. And as we shall also see, sometimes it moved a bit too fast. Uh, so there were some mistakes done, and we'll be talking about one of them specifically today. Uh, and they stem from not really knowing about best practices or how to effectively use uh, the available APIs in QEMO. And there are a lot of them, so it might be difficult to get this broad overview of, of, uh, of how to wire up devices and, and how to make new device models. And it also stems from, from, especially for me, not really fully grasping QDEO and the relationship with the uh, QEMO object model. So uh, speaking of these APIs, one of the first issues I had when I really started doing QEMO work was I had trouble grokking or understanding uh, QDEO versus uh, the QDEO object model. In the beginning, I thought it were two different things because I thought it was a versus. And, and, uh, and, and one of the things when I finally learned was that no QDEO builds on QEMO. And there are documentation available. Uh, it might just be a lot for a new device uh, implementer, a new developer coming right into QEMO and wanted to, to make a new device, it, it might be difficult to, to, to grasp all this documentation available. The header files are extensively documented and uh, that's just a lot of it. So uh, what QDO builds on the QEMO object model and it actually provides an API that is tuned for setting up user-created devices. And there's this emphasis on devices, uh, as we shall see later, because devices are things that we consider to be instantiated in the command line with the dash device. Um, so while it provides this nice API and a lot of nice teas to, to configure these devices, uh, it also imposes a very strict structure on your how to wire up your device uh, inside the QEMO machine that you're emulating. 
Uh, this is an ordered tree where every alternating level is either a bus, which can have multiple devices attached, or a device which can have multiple, can create multiple uh, children uh, buses. So as you can see, you always have a one parent relationship in this tree. So when the NVMe device was first introduced by, by Keith back in 2013, it only had single namespace support. So you would have the device, the NVMe device, and it would have a drive property on it, and it would have all the associated drive or block, the common block device uh, properties like uh, the logical block size, uh, discard support, stuff like that. So what I wanted to do was add support for multiple namespaces, such that we could have several block devices attached with individual parameters. So we wanted different block sizes, say 512 uh, bytes for one of them and, and uh, 4K for, for one of the other namespaces. And when I first posted my patches, uh, I got a lot of helpful comments from the community. So thank you for that. And what we ended up with was adding a new device, uh, the NVMe NS device, and we would add a, a, a bus uh, to the NVMe device such that the uh, namespaces could attach to this bus implicitly or explicitly. And, uh, and then you would have this relationship between the bus, uh, between the, the controller device and the namespaces. And that's sort of also how uh, the SCSI subsystem does it today. So it was very nice because it fits uh, into the QDev tree and uh, you got introspection just worked by typing the uh, info queue tree in the, in the monitor, you'd get this nice tree. You'd, you'd get the uh, namespaces underneath the controllers at, as, as children of the controller and get all the parameters and everything. It just worked and was really nice. When the device uh, uh, was removed or hot plucked, then the, the children on the device would be automatically unrealized. Uh, so everything would clean up by itself. And it all made sense uh, when we introduced this. And this automatic cleanup should be a nice thing, a good thing, but when we added like more advanced features like subsystems and shared namespace functionality, then it became a problem. So if we look at the plumbing uh, and how it was done uh, prior to version 6.0 of QEMO, we had something like this. You would have the uh, main system bus and you would have the PCI Express bus there. Then you would have the NVMe device, PCI device attached to this uh, uh, this PCI bus and it had its own bus where the namespaces was attached on. Looks nice and, and, and just the way it should be. But then we wanted to introduce shared namespaces. And a shared namespace is a namespace that can be accessed concurrently by two or more controllers uh, within the same subsystem. And it's very useful for testing advanced drivers and multipath IO. So we really wanted to, to add this to, to the uh, device model. So it required adding the concept of a NVM subsystem to the device. And again, because I, or apparently also anyone else interested in, in the subsystem at the time, didn't really knew any better, we ended up merging this as a, a device that was a busless device. It was not attached, unroot, it was not attached to the system bus, but it was like an anonymous device, uh, or unattached device. Uh, and then we would add a subsystem uh, link parameter on the controller to plumb it up with this subsystem. And it followed the design of how you would uh, create the NVMe in its uh, namespace device. And it felt like that was the way you, you'd create devices in QEMU. So it looks something like this. Uh, you would have these uh, controllers uh, and one of the controllers would have the namespaces attached and through the, uh, the NVMe control device, the namespaces would know about the subsystem uh, through the link parameter on the, name, uh, on the controller device. And through that, they would register with the subsystem. And through that, you would uh, basically attach it to all the uh, controllers in, in, in the subsystem. Now, uh, and as we can see, the, the namespaces devices can only be attached to one device or one bus uh, in, in like QDEV terms. So, the problem is what happens when we remove this device? Well, then the namespaces would be automatically uh, unrealized and we would end up with the namespaces going away and having maybe having references uh, from the other controller that still thought that these namespaces were attached to it. So that's a big problem. 
So we had to get a fix in for this and we did a fix. We basically added another uh, NVMe bus on the subsystem uh, to which the namespaces were attached directly. And this worked, um, but it was but not really nice because due to uh, backward compatibility issues, we had to keep the, uh, the, the namespace devices to attach initially to the NVMe devices. Uh, and then if there were a subsystem attached, uh, then we would reparent uh, these namespace devices to the subsystem bus instead. So, but if we could fix this probably, uh, prob uh, probably, uh, then one of the things we could probably do was to implement a hot plug handler, a custom hot plug handler, and maybe fail over the namespaces when one of the name uh, controllers uh, was removed. Or if we started from scratch, then we could have made the uh, subsystem device, system bus device uh, um, that exposed this NVMe bus, and then we could keep the namespaces uh, devices as they were, and they would attach to that bus instead of the uh, controller created bus at which we would remove. And so it, it could have looked something like this, that the namespace were directly attached to the system bus and, and we would have references from the uh, NVMe controller directly to that subsystem instead. Now there are some potential issues. Again, there are some compatibility, backward compatibility issues that we would have to solve. Uh, it would probably require to implement new devices and deprecate the old ones. Uh, that's not a bad thing, it, it can be solved. But uh, we, we would technically think of the NVMe controllers as children of the subsystem, but due to the way QBus works, we, we, we wouldn't be able to do this because the, the namespace or the subsystem device is not really a PCI device. It shouldn't be on the PCI bus. And the controllers needs to be on the PCI bus somehow through, through a, uh, in the tree. Uh, so it also retains this idea that subsystem namespaces are actually devices, which is not so nice. But this is how SCSI does it. And SCSI uh, separates the controller from the dri uh, drives and it uses uh, a QDEV bus to wire them and plug plumb them up. So something here must, must be the right way to do it. It, it. it feels right, or it smells right at least. But this one parent restriction have apparently also impeded the addition of multipath IO functionality in SCSI. Uh, and I know that Hannes Leinecke, who I talked to, because we talked about this problem in NVMe, that, that he would run into this uh, restriction of the order tree, uh, which gave him a lot of issues with implementing uh, this in SCSI. Uh, and it also seems like no other subsystem in QEMO or block uh, subsystem block device subsystem seems to support this notion of a shared block device like, like NVMe does. So what if we were to rethink this model? And what if we said that subsystem namespaces shouldn't be modeled as devices? Because neither of them actually expose virtual hardware. They don't expose memory, they don't expose IRQs or anything to the guest. And conceptually, a subsystem is the parent of controls, as I said before, uh, but they, they are not a PCI device. So how would they fit? And namespaces can be associated or children of multiple controllers. Uh, but again, this runs against the order tree with a one parent relationship. So we can't really express that. And fundamentally namespaces and subsystem are just concepts of a device model. And they happen to benefit design-wise when we do this in of being independent devices or independent entities. So there's an alternative to this, and that's use creatable objects that you instantiate on the command line dash object, and those actually might be more appropriate. Now, there are no existing devices uh, that uses objects like this. So there is the memory backend object, uh, user creatable object, and we actually use that in the NVMe device to implement the uh, persistent memory region. So Knowing that there were at least some de devices doing stuff like this, I, I gave it a shot to actually try to implement it like this. So I posted this uh, pretty big uh, patch uh, series called the, that I call the Apocalypse. And considering the size of the NVMe subsystem, it's a really huge patch. Uh, but it is also a major refactor. And I did a lot of work to try to make it as reviewable as possible. And what it does is that it introduces uh, subsystem and namespaces as uh, user creatable objects. Now the goals of the series is to introduce a new experimental controller device. Um, this is mostly 
to get rid of some deprecated uh, deprecated options, as well as changing how the uh, subsystem uh, link uh, property works. It also creates or introduces new experimental use of creatable objects for namespaces and subsystems. And it introduces three of them, uh, two namespaces uh, objects for different namespace types and one for the subsystem. It also exploits the QEMO object model uh, extensively by using or implementing a abstract object that, create, that, that uh, contains the base functionality or common functionality of namespaces. And then you have the NVM namespace types and the zone namespace types that derives uh, from, this, uh, from this base class. And the zone uh, namespace actually even derives from the NVM, NVM uh, object because it, it just extends how the uh, NVM command uh, set works in, in NVM. And we retain backwards compatibility by keeping the uh, existing devices around. So uh, all the existing devices uses the new object code internally. So there's no co uh, code uh, duplication and there's not suddenly two trees to maintain. And the goal of course is to deprecate the subsystem namespace devices when, when these experimental object stabilizes. And there are some perks of course, uh, having int introduced brand new models and that is that we can clean up some of these confusing device parameters such as the MSI XQ size, which is really just maximum interrupt vectors for the device. And there are some so far unofficially deprecated, but uh, uh, should have been officially deprecated parameters um, that, that we can also get rid of. Then there are some fixes for how the namespace is managed, uh, manages uh, some parameters and uh, the subsystem as well that we can just fix up. So instead now you create the subsystem as a user creative object, you give it an identity identifier, and then you add the controllers like before as a device because they need to go on the PCI bus and attaching it to the subsystem. Then you add uh, namespaces. Again, you use the, uh, the NVM or the zone version of them and you attach that to the subsystem. And then there's a new parameter that you can use multiple times to, to define what uh, controllers it should be attached to initially at boot up. There are of course some, some, some things about using object instead of device. And one of the things is that properties are more verbose to define. And that stems from the fact that in, in QDIM, Properties are sort of considered immutable. When you set them, you shouldn't be able to change them. Uh, and uh, you can really hook into the getter or setters. You can do that in, uh, in the, uh, in, with the, the raw user creative object. And that gives you a lot of flexibility, of course, at the cost of uh, slightly more verbose uh, property definitions. There's also no realization phase as there is in QDEO. So, uh, but what you can do is that you can use a machine.notifier to emulate this. Uh, I stole this from, from how the uh, remote object uh, works, which also does uh, something similar to this. And also, if you're not using object composition, which uh, we are not really using in this uh, implementation, then you are responsible for doing the cleanup as, as devices that you depend on are removed from, from the device model. So I think one of the, the lessons learned here is that you should consider all your options when you define or decide how to define uh, your model or design your model. Uh, for instance, should it be split apart into multiple, uh, multiple parts? And should those parts be devices or objects? Like, does it actually behave like a device? Does it expose virtual hardware or memory regions? Like, does it quack? Uh, because the flexibility of user-created objects might be what you're actually looking for if you can get by and live without the, the luxury and the niceties of the QDEO API. Now, as my uh, series goes through review, it might be very possible that we end up going back to the system bus-based approach uh, because that's how other devices does it right now. Uh, but I, I, I hope to at least... Uh, I hope to at least uh, push for, for this version because I think it gives us some really nice and also some nice introspection features uh, because of these more flexible getters and setters of properties. So for future work, one of the main things that we want to change in, in QEMO for a long time is that we have this QEMO SG list and IO vector uh, duality. So 
we uh, use the SG list extensively because most of the data that flows through the controller goes between the controller and the host. Uh, so it needs to be uh, to use the DMA helpers and we use those uh, uh, because they're nice. <laughs> uh, but there's also a bunch of commands that only transfer and move data internally on the, the controller. And those like copy and verify the data and stuff like that. And those use just IO vectors. So we, we also have to move them. And, with, and whenever data goes into an out to uh, the, the controller memory buffer or the persistent memory region, then we also need to use the IO vectors. So one of the ideas here is to open code this DMA mapping and transfer from the DMA helpers into the device and process the PRPs uh, incrementally as we have DMA resources available. Uh, which would completely remove the, the need for this temporary HGLS data structure. One of the other things that we're working on is to try and limit the latency of the device. So this is especially for profiling, polling, and maybe drivers that doesn't rely on interrupts from the device. And one of the ways, or one of the few ways to, to limit the latency of the device is to use in-memory and know of IO uh, and use IO threads or dedicated calls for queue processing. Uh, there's also some para virtualization features in NVMe that can limit the number of memory mapped I.O. Uh, and thereby the number of VM exits that we need to do. Uh, this is not implemented, but there are some existing patches floating around that we basically just need to try and, and, and interpret. I think uh, that the FEMO uh, SSD emulator, which is a fork of QEMO, actually uh, implements this as well. So the the big goal here is that can the emulated device possibly be made faster or at least uh, latency-wise uh, than available hardware? Or at least how low can we actually go in terms of latency? And can we get good enough for, for profiling? So what I was hoping here, especially for Q&A, is if anyone has any, uh, any uh, knowledge or experience with doing stuff like this, and they know that this is a hopeless endeavor, then I'd be happy to, to to know about that, so I don't go wasting my time too much on uh, things that I just think is fun. So uh, this was my talk. I think we're at the top of the hour, and uh, thank you for attending. And I hope to uh, to discuss stuff with you at the Q and A. Thank you.